in order. Looks like we have a quorum and everybody is here. So, <coughs> item number two will look to approve the agenda for this evening. That looks so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. Public comment and communications. We have none <coughs> this evening. Uh, in your packet should have been the minutes from the November 7th uh, meeting. Hopefully everybody has had time to review those. If so, we would need a motion to approve them as presented. I would so move again. Thank you, Jeff. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Doug. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We've got a couple of discussion items this evening. Uh, one, the Murray Park Pavilion project. And Mike, you've given us some information from the fine folks at MSA have done the same. So. Yep, and I got Todd here. Um, so I initially had a call with Todd uh, from MSA here, and we talked about uh, you know, some of the things that uh, I'd be looking at. Um, you know, the design was that was there before was pretty good. Um, we talked about increasing stoves, um, things like that. And then he brought in uh, a gentleman by the name of Carter that has dealt with, he's an architect. He's one of our it? architects that have done these type of projects before. So um, with that discussion, um, we came up with uh, uh, this concept. Um, Men's uh, bathrooms, we went to one stall with three urinals. Um, and then uh, the ladies had um, one, each men and women looks like they had one handicap stall along with uh, uh, three stalls, urinals and stalls on that side with two sinks and, and uh, each room. In the middle there was a storage area, I think that was a requirement. Um, by code, was it? The storage room or the, the plumbing chase? chase? Plumbing yeah. Chase. yeah. The plumbing chase, I don't know if it's necessarily required by code, but it's yep. typically yep. seen on these projects so you can get at the plumbing. Um, I, I, I think it was just a wall there prior. There was no chase or anything. Yep, that's what I meant. Um, and then a, a concession a stand area with a, a small sink in there um, also. And we also did discuss the um, second level with the spiral staircase. Um, obviously the spiral staircase that was designed wasn't uh, code. And I felt that usually a second story is great in the beginning but falls by the wayside um, in later years. So. One level we felt would be um, sufficient. Okay, Todd, you got anything to um, from to add from um, in the background what you guys talked about? Yeah, I mean, like Mike said, I mean, we, Carter and I talked with Mike. That, he had a few ideas of what he wanted to see and really what we did we took off from the original floor plan that was provided and uh, like I said we removed that second floor viewing area the restrooms we added two more toilets and urinals um, we added that plumbing chase we added a, a backroom storage area um, with the three compartment sink and then there's space back there for the electrical service that comes into that building um, in the in the front concession area, they added some room for some reach-in coolers. I guess that's one of the things Carter pointed out when we first looked at this. That there really didn't seem to be room for any coolers or anything. And then, as far as the, the dimensions compared to what was originally provided, it's pretty much near um, the roof area that was on the original. But as far as the actual building itself, it got three foot wider and five foot longer. So. It's not much different than what it was originally was. The three ten a foot is that because it's a small footprint that needs a minimum of plumbing and electrical. 
you know. And some manufacturers that don't spend over 150 a foot to add on to their plants. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, those costs are coming from just historical projects that he's worked on, uh, similar pavilions and whatnot. So that's where he's grabbing those numbers from. What have, those have come in recently. The exterior, I believe we, we talked about, um, that would be some type of block. Um, similar or something to the lower um, <coughs> Murray Park Pavilion that's there. And uh, the roof, um, I think we talked about, and I don't know if that was in here, uh, of a, a steel type roof. Now there's a certain type of uh, steel roof they're putting on uh, because of foul balls and things like that. So rather than a flat steel or a, a one rib roof, there was some other type that I think just Jake, steel shingles that Carter talked about some type of steel shingles uh, just because of the, the hard balls and the fall balls and things like that. Tom, what do you think of that 310? Um, <laughs> let's put it this way, I would not be building my house at that price. Um, I, I think that uh, for 1,100 square foot at uh, 700,000 um, first of all, how about a speech from the uh, somebody that's on the board? You have four hundred sixty dollars, four hundred sixty thousand contingency, correct? <coughs> yes. Okay. So I'd have to go to the city council, Rob, to see whether or not this would fly. I, I mean, what what do we do with it? Uh, I think it's. I, I do believe we work with contractors we get by much less, mm -hmm. I would think. It still has to be bid out. Right. Yeah. No matter what. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, as we have less than the 460 because we have to put some back away for uh, up oh, maintenance. To, to maintenance sure. for in perpetuity, mm -hmm. which is crazy. but. So it's going to be a lot less. Mm -hmm. It's got to be like 380, I mean, tops, honestly. Mm -hmm. And if it can't be done for that, I, I don't know what to do. Because uh, I, I'm not a builder, and I don't know well, if that's... Well, right now, a, it, even with, for instance, the, uh, the square footage of the, the masonry in there, uh, that's all, every, everything seems in my experience, to be exaggerated. I, I don't believe that this building would have to be... Uh, again, we haven't seen the specifications on there either. I mean, you know, uh, was he going to write specifications as far as what? I mean, why, why does this make this uh, $310 square foot? Well, he's just basing it on similar projects that he's worked on. We don't yeah, but, know there, I mean, but there has to be a reason that they're that high, even in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Uh, and those projects were probably bid out, and, and that's what they came in at. Okay. Well, then, I think the next step would be to, to write the specs so we put it up for bid and see what it's actually at with local contractors. Isn't that a proper way of. You, you can always reject, the council can always reject it. But, yes. Right, yes. Um, you know, uh, the bids, if they don't meet the needs. Um, you know, we don't have a design. Right, so it all has to be designed. You know, you're going to have to design an engineer and specs for it appears yeah. about sixty thousand um, dollars. How much to do it? Uh, with with that being said, um, the person, that, the original person mm -hmm. that, that did this, I, he's worked for us on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and uh, his. He, he, he has not failed us with the state to date, yeah. but I don't think his charges will be that great either. So I know you have the practice right now that you yeah. use. And and that practice. that's up to somebody higher than me. Yes, you, absolutely. Then we to make that decision. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Um, I mean, I got other, you know, nothing against MSA. I'm sure there's sure. all kinds of engineering firms absolutely. out there. Um, you know, we're... 
Well, we had discussed that too on the call. Is, you know, yep. we could provide suggestions on what we typically see on these, and if you guys want to kick it back to them and mm -hmm. they take that into account and take from there, we're, I mean, we're know, fine with that too. So, I'm not, I'm not negative with the project. I, I would be with the cost that with, with this. Oh, I'm sure. Well, it's you on the council would also would be, would you not? Yeah. This is not going to fly. No. So, uh, I mean, Bill does a very good job. You want to take around with him and see where him right up the specs. And I can move reach to out thing. to him and ask. Sure. Okay. And then you then you got to ask counselor, right? To see if the court can um, do it, or just have. Him, I don't know. You know, I mean, want to spend money? I suppose you're gonna have to have counselor for what. Or yeah, I mean, if there's engineering costs, it's got to come from somewhere. Um, but right now, um, the engineering budget that I have would not be able to cover that um, cost. So I can, if that's okay with you, I can reach out to Bill and um, ask. Is that my action item? Seems like that's the way we want to go. Well, I'd make that motion that we request uh, an estimate on specs from Bill Hope, for the same yeah. name, or anyone else who wants to. Uh, I guess. I mean, you probably don't. If there's another party that. Well, we have other engineering firms. I mean, there's. I mean, I'm just saying that because it could be other taxpaying citizens and tell that could do it too. I don't know. But, but Hope is good, yeah. So, well, yeah, I would make that a motion to. Consider an expenditure subject to council approval to see if he can provide specs to us. Well, one of my questions, as far as the preliminary estimate of our piping that we have down, uh, water services into that building now, is it not? Yeah. Not. There's sewer and water. And there's sewer and electrical. And, electrical so. and, and you have fifty-one thousand seven hundred dollars for that. If you, if you disconnect at the edge of the building that's there now, when you're Take it apart. Yeah, I'm not it, it sure what that done. entailed. That would entail completely relaying all those, and I guess we weren't sure what was all there and okay, what condition it was in, and okay. that would be worst case. Yeah. Yeah. We have to investigate a little bit more yeah. uh, on that. Uh, I know that, from what I understand, talking to Chris Laveris, uh, this, the sanitary lateral, it, I believe, is eight inches PVC. Um, I'm not sure the water. Service or the storm sewer. So um, we would have to do some more investigating on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So I'm yeah. wondering, Mike, if you have in your arsenal maybe a couple of other places that we could get a bid to um, get these specs drawn up and those type of things. I that do. Might, that might be wise. I have some other ones. I mean, I mean, certainly. You know, Bill at Blowfish and, and his group, they do a nice job, but we probably ought to have a couple more yep. to look at. So, um, that's fine. And then once... Um, I think what, what I should do here is, we do have a design, um, is to um, maybe put together, you know, a couple components of... Um, you know, is yeah. Asking you guys, is is the block wall seem sufficient? Um, do you, do you find sufficient? Um, you know, are we going overboard on a steel type shingled roof? It costs more. Do we we hit that with a regular shingled roof? Um, maybe well, maybe just, maybe the regular shingled roof. I honestly don't know how many with the netting and stuff on those ball fields. I honestly don't know how many fall balls are going to hit, ever hit that building, or ever have in the past. That roof is a very large roof. Obviously, there's a shade area around the you outside. Know, Do we have to have that? I mean, for that cost that we have up here. Right? No, you don't. 2,340 square feet. Yeah, I mean, don't if, if we're looking, looking to bring it down to um, something that the council can handle. It was a concept that was brought Yep. Yeah, to from the, the original. The, from right. the original, and, that, and that's, you know, and it's a nice concept. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and I, I, I do like the um, overhangs um, where people do have a way to get out of the uh, weather when there's a game. Mm -hmm. Um, or we put picnic tables under there, whatever. Um, but so that is a nicety. Is it something that has to be there? No. We could make I, it smaller. What? So. I, I mean, what should be said? All of these things have to be taken a look at how it affects the, mm -hmm. the budget. Mm -hmm. Yep. Everything. And it's just our first go around. Here. Yes. Sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Mike, then when you have that information, can you let me know and then we can make sure to get it on it as an agenda item up? I will do. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yep. Jeff, you had made a motion for Bill. Would you extend that motion not only to Bill but a couple mm -hmm. others? All right. Okay. Did we have a second on that? I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion taken in getting Information regarding costs for specs and um, drawings for the project. I think there was one thing that we talked about too that um, getting a building in there um, would probably require taking down some uh, fencing um, to be able to get in there and do the construction. Um, mm -hmm. So that's an added cost. Um, and then putting something back up on that too, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of that is, is kind of in there um, from an overall cost. We will take a look at it some more. Alrighty. We should vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion? Yep. Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, Mike, thank you. Um, next item, um, fleet management program. So, I did, um, the only updates that I've done lately was we added in, um, uh, we pulled all the costing that was missing from some of the trucks and we, we used to put that all together. And I got that back in there, ran the, ran the data, and it really uh, didn't change um, uh, any of the data um, on replacement gears that you see on the one page. So even our thought process... Um, I missed that page. I guess I didn't see the printout. Do you have an extra copy there? I don't, but you can... Can I look this. at this? Um, Thanks. So even our long-term planning that we had before, it pretty much mirrors the thought process that we had before, which is good to have those numbers to ensure that um, our thoughts are correct on that. So um, was there anything you guys wanted to add or delete, or what did you think of? Kind of having some type of documentation on how we do stuff. Or do we just wing it and put in what we want? No, we can't wing it. <laughs> I don't have to look up Hi. any of that. Is this a common council meeting? No, this is a public works committee meeting. Okay, is common council meeting tonight? No, it is next, next week. Next week on Tuesday at 7 p.m. Yeah, is this a meeting about anything about the deer farm? Uh, no, that's, town that's the town. That's town of Ribbon. Where is that? And way out on Douglas Street. On Douglas? Yeah, I don't know when they meet. Okay, thanks. Yep. You bet. That was hard. Um, Okay, Mike, I have a question for you. Based on these numbers here, what is, what is the next time to replace a bow truck or some other equipment? That should be all right in there. Okay. Um, you're past it. Yeah. Back. Right no. there. Are there dates on the right-hand side? Yeah, mm -hmm. the replacement here. Oh. Uh, yeah. No, I have... A okay, then it's on another sheet there. Sorry about that. Okay. Nope. Going the wrong way. One back. One, one more. Try one more. Yeah. 
I just had it there when I had it. No, is it, is it the Appendix B equipment yeah. replacement schedules? That's right it. Right Yep. Okay, now where, where is the last call? Oh, replacement here, of course. Well, um, so we are due for another pretty much one every year from now on. I think next year it, it aligned with the garbage truck. Uh, well, that's another topic we'll talk about. I just one of the numbers. Yeah, I get that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Is there any logic to when you see replacement cost estimates? They're so different year over year. Um, <coughs> if you could, you would it make sense to budget so that you would accrue on a more level basis? kind of dollars that you may need to even this thing out. It, it's kind of hard because the first couple of years are some big ones, but... There's nothing in the budget to pull out and budget. Everything is loaned. Everything is loaned. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's all borrowed. Borrow and payback. They keep for the state. Yep. Um, they don't let you accrue like that. That's, they don't give us the revenue. They don't give you the revenue. No. It. It's a matter of having the revenue to set aside. We did, a, I believe we did accrue or, or Hold some money from loan some money each year before me to get the salt shed. Um, so um, that has happened in the past. Yep. Um, I know the police department sets money aside each year for a um, new squad replacement on a schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and I think EM. EMS does the same thing for replacement of uh, ambulance yeah. or paramedic truck or whatever mm -hmm. uh, it is now. Do they, they, they don't, do they do that fire district though? Yeah, but it's, um, I think in a couple years we're due for a new engine. But when, by the time we replace all the engines, the last one's going to be 30 years old. It's way past its life expectancy. Sure. Don't have the revenue coming in from the state anymore. So, I mean, I've said it before, and they'll say it again. Their shared revenue got cut way off back in about 2012, and we're paying for it now. So, um, there's some other things that we can maybe do with that, especially with the garbage truck. But maybe that's not for a future agenda because it's not on for tonight. So, this is just right. Just Remember, this is just a guidance, okay? This is going to guide us there, and then it's up to council to determine if the money should be spent or not. Does, does that make sense, Al? Yeah, it does. It's part of the you know the capital improvement program, and yep. So you know, there's still so, items I can remember that are five years ago that are still on that capital improvement program that haven't been, the revenues haven't been there to, to fund it, so. This does not mean that we're going to get it. What it means is it's a guidance based on the data. This is how it should be laid out. Is it still possible though, and again, maybe I'm not sure how revenue sharing all works nowadays, but couldn't you take like those first two years and you'd have an elevated payment because of a big cost, but then when you get down to the less expensive years, first of all, try to get you got a good enough credit rating at the city, maybe you could get some long-term financing that maybe even slightly longer than the useful life of the equipment. And you go, why would you do that? Well, because you would drop the payments when you come to the less expensive years, thereby bringing down that amortization on those bigger units that you stretched out. But that way, you'd still level off the replacement to a, more, a little bit more of an even keel if the state lets you do it that way, I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't think they care what payments you set, do they? No, well, I don't think so. So that, that's another that's way. That's just a part of our borrowing capacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's something we're trying to bring down. And it just takes time to do that. I know we have some promissory notes that um, we can refinance and level out the debt payments. Mm -hmm. Because they spike and go down and they go up and down. Having those leveled off will then be able to increase what we can do with that money. Even though maybe this is going to cost us a lot more down the road, but maybe not. Having that, you know, 
oh, I see this year we're going to have 300000 more on our budget, but next year we're only going to have 100000 So you can't really budget for, you know, pay raise or anything to keep that sustained if that peak goes up for that debt again. Do they adjust to revenue sharing by how much debt service you say you need? No. Or, or do they say you only get to play with this much money? No, they give us revenue, uh, the restraint uh, expenditure program. And so we have to hold down what we get, what we spend, so that we get that hundred and ten, roughly $110,000 a year from the state. You know, it's another hook to get. And you know, if you spend more, then you're not going to get it. So if you're really going to spend, you're going to really ratchet up. You're going to really have to ratchet up to make up for the, losing the $110,000, and nah, no one really wants to do that. But I mean, they don't ask you what your payments are. No, they, they just, don't care. You right. just have to manage your, your right. debt. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so, well, we're going to have to bring this information forward because it's going to be part of budgeting and those type of things going forward. Whether the state makes changes with a new governor and if it's seated in 2022 or what have you. Right. Um, but it's got to be brought forward because we have the information. Yep. So. I mean, it, it, it's good information mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 we have to look at it because having the night couple, we're doing better now, you know. Obviously, we've got a new truck and another one that we'll get that'll take take two of the nineties out. Oh, great! Um, out of the three, so um, and I think then next year the garbage truck was planned on the following year, twenty one. I think it had the garbage truck on there. Yeah. So um, this is a little long term planning mm -hmm. for yeah. that. So yeah, good detail. Um, it's something, it's a good discussion. Do you ever do five-year capital expenditure plans? We do, um, yep, that's out there and that's what I was talking about, uh, the five-year capital plan had. Uh, it was kind of interesting because it, I, we just put the numbers in it, kind of mirrored the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, from what we've seen, just from a feely standpoint. Mm -hmm. I do have this at home. I forgot to bring it. Any other questions? I don't have anything else. Well, I would think we, we're going to need to, I'll talk with uh, the mayor and see what he thinks it would be a good time for us to bring this forward. This has got to get in front of the council. Yeah. And, um, Again, so it's it's part of the thought process. Yep. Moving forward. Correct. For a lot of you know on a lot of different levels. Yep. So is that acceptable? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Any suggestions for agenda items for the next meeting? I need to. Uh, oddly, I do, Al. I have a suggestion for the next meeting. Uh, that'd be waste. Or, uh, I'm sorry, commercial waste pickup in the city. Uh, I'd like to discuss limiting it or eliminating it, because then that goes to the garbage truck. Um, I, I understand that we spend, out of the city's funds, about $90,000 a year at least picking up commercial garbage for the businesses around the community. $90,000 is approximately half of a cost of a plow truck. Um, I would like to personally end it or limit it greatly. I mean, I'll look across the street here and behind uh, uh, Marcus Theater there, and I see these big 350-gallon cans we have, and I noticed them last week. Not only were they full, they were more than full. They are three or four or five bags on top. So, um, honestly, I don't think the city should pay for it. I don't think we can bear that cost, especially when we have plow trucks that are in their 90s, from their 90s. We need to make these structural changes, and I think that's something we need to really discuss and then move forward to with the council about doing something about it. I understand a lot piss off a lot of people, but sorry. Well, I own quite a few buildings in town, and I'll be very honest with you. Um, I think it'd be a good idea. Let's put it on and talk I mean, about right it. Right now, we're cash poor, correct? We're yes, yes, we are. We need that. And, and we need the revenue back in we, our budget. We can't increase the values. Get more taxes. You got to get it someplace. So I have no problem. Yeah, I, I think about our bank, and we 
that one wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, I think it's an awful nice convenience that you do it, but, you know, I, when you, you call me about what time you guys come over by us, I'm like, um, I was thinking to myself, why do we even just roll it out our door? We should really have it out to the street, shouldn't we? Mm -hmm. I mean, you should, um, and that's why I put uh, different signage up on that side, because that Ransom Street is so narrow. Mm -hmm. um, after working with the uh, police department and, and us, as we had some issues in that area, getting trucks around, you probably had issues just getting in and out. Is it, it, it been a budget discussion with uh, any advance paper or advance disposal, you know, that type of thing, see what the cost is compared to the 90000 that we have here? We have all that data. And how does it look? You know? um, we ran, it, we should just put it on for a discussion so I can bring Let's all the data. Let's put it on for okay. discussion. That's fine. Yeah, you, could have, you could have a commercial establishment yeah. pay more, right? Because it well, might we, yeah. we, we, that's, that's part of the discussion. We can't charge for it. Why not? State law. Really? Yes, and we can bring that next time, and we can show you where we can't charge for well, it. Right now, at my plan, I had, you have to pay for it. I have, yeah, oh yes. Correct? Oh yes. So, I mean, if, if you have a business, whether it's a store or industry or whatever else, why do we have to pay for it and nobody else pays for it? It's not really fair, is it? No, it, that's it's, the it's other not. thing, is if you're paying for it and everybody else, lots of aren't, Mm -hmm. Why don't you get a can and live on the city's dime? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's fair either way. Let's put let's put it on the agenda. Okay. Let me bring the data. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know I've worked with you on it before. We've been, we've been, I've been working with Mike for some time on getting um, some data. And okay. bring that data, and um, then I can go from there. Oh, you also want, want to talk to Lori. She also did some research on what other communities do. Mm -hmm. And we want to bring that forward too. I think. I do have one other discussion item that I just want to bring out, and, and that's a little bit why um, Todd is here also, that um, we'll br be bringing forward at some point. So um, we found this, we, Lori found this document, it's called the Ripon Outdoor Recreation and Open Space Plan um, from 2006. Um, so MSA, um, it needs to be updated every 10 years. Five. Five years? Yeah, oh, see, I've me. noticing stuff like that, yeah. Okay, so with with that, um, we can't find an electronic form. <laughs> um, so uh, I will have uh, Lisa recreate um, this here, and um, we'll have to start to update this. Uh, this will tie into... Stewardship funding. Oh, oh, uh Oh, go ahead and finish, because I have something that ties into that. And um, Go ahead, Mike. Um, so, you know, we're trying to tie in this funding. So re really it all circles back to Murray Park is where this all stemmed from. Um, as we kind of started talking through the pavilion, we kind of got off subject and, you know, we started talking about parking issues and how, you know, how nice that park is and what you could do with it and connecting trails and all this other stuff we got really off the subject. Um, but, you know, we started thinking about stewardship funding, which, you know, can fund trails and shelters and, you know, park amenities. So, uh, you know, like we said, updating that outdoor recreation plan is like the first step in that direction of applying for that funding. You need to have a current plan in place. Who asks for that? What is the storage? It's through the DNR. The, DNR. Yeah. Yeah. the other piece uh, with this Murray Park Pavilion and the stewardship fund is how does the Northwestern Trail tie into that? Well, the beauty of this is uh, yeah. that's going to be really easy because there's sidewalks going from the Northwestern Trail that we, we just found this out. Um, that will go up into the Cam Cambridge area and up oh. by Julie Bach and Keith Bach's house. We own <laughs> an easement there to bring that trail right in to the park. Now it's all tied together and that really helps us for funding? It does and there's also a trail out to the east too, the Muscatine Valley State Trail, which could be tied into Now, also. I have a question. I was reading in the Fond du Lac paper, 
City of Fond du Lac has some kind of, they're, for their park system, they're getting state and federal money, it was said. Have, and I got the feeling, because the paper's a bit vague, it had to do with their planning for the park. And every, they had this plan out, and each year, this is what they want to do. So they, get, they could get this money, and I don't know how hard it was or how, I got the feeling as they were getting it for years. So it may be once you have this plan and you're implementing it, you'll get some money to do it or to do most of it. Yeah. And I'm like, Lori, why can't we do it? But apparently she's gone. Um, so I, I asked her, you know, I just emailed her, um, you know, last weekend, but I guess she's gone. Um, why can't we do that? You know, why can't we look at this and, and have this, you know, it's been how many years? Oh, six to now. Mm -hmm. You know, and I bet we haven't done a bit of work on it. And I think we need to do that. So, um, so yeah. If you could so get, with this and all this stuff, it's really, it's, it falls into two committees. And, you know, I see it falling into two committees. I, uh, Parks and Park and Rec yeah. and Public Works. These, and so does this building. So these two might at some point have to come together. I think so. And, you know, go from there. So I don't... And the, the, I guess the other... The, the Community Outdoor Recreation Plan looks at the city as a whole. You know, 10,000 foot view. Every mm -hmm. park, every trail, whatnot. And then from there, I guess what you were just talking about was a master plan. I think so, but, you know, I don't know so that. So it's all yeah. phased out. Right. And you're getting, you know, funding for different components. They got grant to fix the pavilion, toilets and pavilion, and they got this and they got that. Because it, it looked like they had a plan set up. This year we're right. going to do this, this year we're going to do this, and they got the funding for it. And I don't know how hard, but they said state and federal funding. Mm -hmm. And that's where MSA really comes into play with this, because we just don't have the, first of all, I don't have the expertise. Yeah. And we don't have the personnel to, to accomplish this. Right. So that's where we're going to have to rely on outside sources for that. Well, I might, I may see Joe Moore, the Fond du Lac uh, administrator, on uh, Friday morning. I can ask him some loose questions about how they get oh, yeah. started on this. Uh, I've talked to Joe before, and I, this is a few months ago before. I, yeah, if you talk to him about that, I, I, he's a, you know, as you know, he's a really nice guy. Oh, I, yeah. I bet he would, you know. He's a, get this in an electronic form. And try to pick through it and get it updated. Just get like 10, 12 pages to each other person to pre-type on. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Well, well, you, can, you should be able to scan that and mm -hmm. at least get it out electronically. Yeah, we'll scan see. It up. I got a PDF. We'll see what we can do. Okay. Uh, so we'll I'll bring that to the yeah. next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. I think we got enough for the next meeting. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. Oh, yeah, I think so. Oh, we did have one other discussion. Sorry. Um, so we're looking at funding for Pacific Street and, and, and those areas, uh, Washington, and it goes over into Hamburg, and it even goes out to by U.S. Bank where that creek goes through. So I've been here almost two years. What I've seen is is the weather change where we get this lot of snow it's up on the prairie it melts within two days okay it comes down into Sandmar it gets out of Sandmar Mar, and where does it go within two days right back here it floods okay so talking with MSA again uh, is are these culverts sized to handle that? I don't know. No. Okay. I'd no. hate to rebuild um, Pacific Street or any of them streets and then we find out that it's not handling water properly. So what they're recommending is a downstream study to ensure they're right or to tell us they need to be changed. So we can incorporate that into our street builds okay because you know what happens back here and, and you got you got a business back here that's impact could be impacted mm -hmm. uh, you got a business on uh, Washington that is impacted because it floods through his building um, and 
I think Lori's one house is a pool in the basement. Uh, so we think it's a good idea, and I think the cost was we, you guys guessed between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars. But that would be part of that plan moving forward again. So I'm, I'm asking, should we fund this study? Well, so so or table it to talk about next time. You can talk with. So it's something we need to bring before the council? Yeah, spend the yes. money? I think so too. Yep. Yeah. You know, but you see my thought yeah. process on yeah, this? Yeah, I, I think we need to. We don't have. We don't have no idea. We need to. We don't know. And if we're going to spend money on the street, I don't want to rip it up again. People are going to come up with right. pitchforks. We need, okay. we need right. that data. So, and we might be able to incorporate that into some of the costs of, of repairing those streets. Then. Um, what do you mean? There's, there's two ways to look at it. You, when we would design a street redesign, yeah, we would take a look at the culvert size. We could do that per street if we really wanted to. This study would be basically a road map all the way down that creek. Each road, so you know, whenever you do those streets, this is what you got to do. Yeah, do it once. Um, the other component that comes in is if you change Pacific Street out, well, now what happens down there if you're letting more through up here? And if we let more through up here, it's going to flood over the road at U.S. Bank. I can almost assure that. I have to watch it this way. Well, where's it going now? If it's not, if you're not letting. Well, it's flooding upstream a little more. <laughs> Is, is there any downstream out of the city of Ripon with a problem that it's going to be too much water for erosion? We'd have to look at that in the next culverts that I think that are by alibis there or whatever that is now or look appear to be big enough to handle that. I'm not yeah. obviously an engineer, but size does matter. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so, you you want to bring this forward to the council yeah. probably sooner than later. I think that for planning and getting it going for next year, we probably should. Yeah, we'll get that if you guys well, think that, I, I think I think if Mike if Mike talks to Lori and, and Lud and, and the mayor on this, they can put it on the agenda. Okay. They'll, yeah. they'll know the route. To and, yeah, and I think we can put a bug in their ear too. I, th I think it's important we we uh, look at that. Sure. We can do some work on that. When we owned the Smucker's building on Hamburg, we had to have a flood insurance. And that's that's a high building compared to the creek. Mm -hmm. It is. But I guess I guess that's a few times that we ran into a lot of problems. Another thing with what I'm hearing, you know, if you guys have knowledge of buildings that flood and if I mean, if, if there's any pictures or anything out there that you guys have, please keep those and get those to us because that, that could be really useful for other funding out there for uh, flood mitigation. So if there's anything around like that or if there's just knowledge like that. Well, when uh, the sand mine dispute was going on back in 08, 09, 10, 11, wasn't there some uh, watershed recording resurfacing from Excel Engineering? There's not a, a, I don't believe there's a watershed out there. Well, the watershed is, is all the water moving from the southwest farms across Sandmar into the corner, right? That's been a watershed for a Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And, and supposedly Excel went and did a watershed design when they approved the Sandmar plans. Now, we're getting back into a, a, a long-term issue that was discussed by a lot of parties, including the DNR in those years, resurfaced, but I thought I had remembered that Excel was brought back in to double check the numbers. And I can reach out to them. Because that's at least something you might be able to use to say, exactly. this tells us what's coming at the town, mm -hmm. because the watershed isn't something new. It's been there for yeah. 2,000 years or 20,000 or 100,000 years, I don't know. That's and I guess what you're talking, I guess I'm not familiar enough, but it, that's a subdivision? It's a 44 lot plat subdivision with okay. assisted living and apartments. And and there was a design made knowing that that water should have to pass through there and that they would produce road surface that would yep. stop yep. water. And so they put in the holding pond and found out afterwards that there really was not enough care done to keep the culverts open under the railroad trestles. And, <coughs> and so a lot of things had to be rethought that maybe never were done 50 and 100 years ago out there along the railroad trestle. Okay. 
call that a Set subdivision mostly uh, unbuilt yet because of that water problem, Al, do you think? No, no. No. No? <clears throat> okay. I don't think it helped it. No, I don't think it helped. But I think there's other areas that people are looking at to build homes. Well, I mean, there's a nice area out there, but I, there are probably other ones. So. I have a prediction you're going to see a couple of homes, maybe three, start up out there in the next 30 days. I hope so. There we go. <laughs> Bankers Progress. know. What's that? Bankers know. It's a rumor. It's yeah, a it's a rumor. Yeah. So, can we just recap the action items then? Basically, they're for me. <laughs> yeah, the commercial waste pickup uh, item, you're going to bring some data yeah. and all that. And uh, we'll mention that to Lori to get it on the agenda. <coughs> uh, discuss the updated Ripon Outdoor Recreation and Open Space Plan. And then we were going to take and you were going to discuss with um, the mayor and Lori the item regarding the, the water handling, handling the downstream study. And um, see where we want to see where we want to go with that. But it's it's going to have to go to council. <coughs> Okay. Anything else? Yeah, I have more, but we're going to, at some point over the course of January or February, it looks like January or full, is um, we want to talk about having a colibarium, uh, potential colibarium built oh, yeah. um, in one of our cemeteries. Um, so we'll bring that forward. Bill Neal. Um, been working with him and, and there's some other support for that um, and I believe that running with a high level numbers that I've run is this uh, would help bring a revenue uh, to the cemeteries um, and start to support that funding because as I said at one of the council me meetings uh, right now 54% of Wisconsinites are cremated, <coughs> and over the course of the next 10 years, it'll probably go up 10%. So, um, mm -hmm. something I think it's a couple things to look at. Uh, first of all, it, it provides a, a, a something to folks for that, um, a colibarium, and it, it has a possible revenue uh, or income that will help the city down the road. Too. Does that support low to moderate more, or is there really no socioeconomic status? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, I don't think I've even talked. I don't know if they, but um, we're seeing a need for that. Um, and, and I think uh, I think what we would be asking for was um, to do a discovery on it get some numbers, bring it to you guys uh, for discussion, okay? And that's where Bill would come in and there's some other supportive uh, um, funeral homes too, okay? Mm -hmm. Anything else? No, I think I said enough. Okay. All right. Um, next meeting date, we'll have Karen work her magic and <coughs> We'll get something set where we can all make it. Um, so other than that, thank you everyone. Please have a wonderful holiday season. And uh, we'll see everybody next year. Thank you, Al. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone.